In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to factor using a quadratic pattern. So let's say I was given the problem of factoring x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 8. Well, the first thing that I think of is yikes, I have no idea what to do. But then you remember um, that you know how to factor a quadratic equation, and that if this were quadratic, it sure would be a whole lot easier. So what I want you to think of when you're doing problems like this is think about what you would have to put here to make it look like it's something quadratic. Because in my original quadratic formulas, it's always some like x squared or 3x squared or something like that, but it's always something squared. And then my next term will always be um, just an x right, whatever that is, and then I'll always have a constant out at the end. So the trick here is to think of exactly what represents what goes in this blank, okay, because whatever it is, it has to be the same exact thing. So let me show you another way to write this that's going to make this factoring a little easier. I know that x to the fourth is the same exact thing as x squared times x squared, right? Which I could rewrite like this as well. Okay, so this is the, the idea that you want to try to have here. You want to try to get it so that you can write it as one thing squared, okay? Now, what about the minus 2x squared? Well, that could be written as minus 2, and then I could leave this as the x squared term as it was here, because they're identical, they're the same exact thing. And then I could bring down my constant, which is just minus 8. So here's the next thing I want you to do. After you think about what you have to square, to get your um, original polynomial back, I want you to, at least until you feel comfortable, or if you don't like this, you don't have to do it, but I'm going to give this x squared a different name, because there's x squareds everywhere right now. I'm going to give him the capital letter A. You can give him any name that you want. But this is A, and so is this. Okay? That means I can rewrite this function like this. I could say that it is a squared minus 2a minus 8. Now, can you factor this? And the answer should be yes. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and factor that like normal. I'm going to do that on the next page, right here. And so what I would do is I would set up my two pairs of parentheses just like this. And since the coefficient of my squared term is a 1, I don't have to worry about doing the grouping or anything like that. This is just a pretty straightforward um, factoring problem. So we're going to look for factors of 8 to give me a summer difference of 2, it looks like, my b term, which is right there. And that's going to be 4 and 2 which means I'm going to need to get to a negative 2. This is going to have to be 2 minus 4. That would give me a negative 2. All right. So that means capital A goes in my first positions of each binomial. And then I have a plus 2 here and a minus 4 here. Now, this is not my final answer because my original answer had x's in it. So do you remember what capital A stood for? And if you don't, let's look back and see. So it looks like I had a be equal to x squared. So I'm going to go back in my new problem and replace those a's with x squared. So then my final answer will be x squared plus 2 times x squared minus 4. And that would be my answer. Now, let's say the question was to actually solve this. In other words, could you solve for x if this was equal to 0? And the answer is yes. 
What you want to do is look at this in two different parts because if this part is 0, then 0 times x squared minus 4 is also 0. And if this piece is just 0, then once again the whole thing is 0. So if I treat these as separate entities and solve for 0, I'll get my solutions. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to have x squared plus 2 equals 0 here. And then I'm going to have x squared minus 4 equals 0 here. So I'm going to solve each of these as if they were their own original problem. So in the first one, I have x squared plus 2. And I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2 from both sides, which would give me x squared equals negative 2. And if I square root that, that would become x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 2. Now, we know because we have studied complex numbers already that I can't leave a negative under my radical. So I have to take the negative out by using imaginary number i. So this actually turns in to plus or minus i times the square root of 2. So that is one, or in this case two, of my answers. The positive part and the negative part. Now let's work on the x squared minus 4. This is a difference of perfect squares, which makes my life a whole lot easier. Because all I have to do is write x in my first position and the square root of 4 in the second. Give one of them a plus, give one of them a minus, solve each one of those equal to 0. So my solution for this piece would be x equals negative 2. And my solution for this piece would be x is equal to positive 2. So notice in this problem, if I were to set this equal to 0 and solve the solutions, I have four solutions, two of them being real and two of them being imaginary. Let's take a look at how to use this quadratic part one more time without having to solve. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to factor this in the same way that we did before. So once again, I'm looking for something being squared that gives me x to the fourth. And once again, conveniently, this is x squared, because x squared squared is x to the fourth. Now, I could rewrite plus 7x squared as plus 7 and then times x squared like this. So now I have that a term again, right? And then I have to bring out my constant, so plus 6. So that makes my new problem a squared plus 7a plus 6. And I'm going to factor that. This is a straightforward one again. So that's going to be an a here and an a here. Now I have to think of my factors of 6. That give me a sum or difference of 7. And it looks like that's going to be 6 times 1, and they're both going to be positive. So one of these gets the plus 6, and one of them gets the plus 1. It doesn't matter which one gets what. And now my last step, I have to replace a with what it was originally, which is x squared. So this would be x squared plus 6, and x squared plus 1. And there you go. We can call it a day because this does not ask me to solve for x at all. And that's going to conclude this tutorial.